Hello everyone. In this video, I will be explaining you about regulation of acetyl-CoA carboxylates. Acetyl-CoA carboxylase is a rate-limiting and regulated enzyme in fatty acid biosynthesis. And how exactly this particular enzyme is regulated, so let's look into that. So you have acetyl-CoA here and that is converted into melanyl coa so this is the most important step that needs to be going on in fatty acid biosynthesis this job it will be done by acetyl coa carboxylase enzyme now this acetyl coa carboxylase it is regulated by two mechanisms one is allosteric modulators can regulate this enzyme or hormonal control can go on in this particular enzyme. Now the allosteric regulation, it will be modulated by two molecules here. So the citrate. So the citrate is basically synthesized in TCA cycle and citrate will move out of mitochondria into cytoplasm by citrate transporter and in the cytoplasm, citrate is broken down into acetyl-CoA and oxaloacetate by citrate lyase enzyme. Now, when you find citrate in the cytoplasm, so that citrate it will act as a positive modulator on acetyl-CoA carboxylase and thereby it, it, it polymerizes acetyl-CoA carboxylase. Note that acetyl-CoA carboxylase, it will be in dimer form whenever it is inactive. So, citrate, it brings all these dimers together and make it as a polymerized active form of an enzyme. Now, the end product of fatty acid synthesis is a long chain fatty acyl molecule. So, that is most of the time it is palmitate. So, whenever there is accumulation of long chain fatty acids in the cytoplasm, those long chain fatty acids, they have got a negative effect on acetyl-CoA carboxylase enzyme. So, these two are the uh, allosteric modulators on acetyl-CoA carboxylase. One is citrate which is a positive modulator and long chain fatty acid which is a negative modulator. Now let's move on to see hormonal regulation on acetyl-CoA carboxylase. Now the, whenever person is in well fed condition we all know insulin will be elevated and the main mechanism of insulin on our enzymes is the covalent mod modulation and what is the covalent modulation? So, insulin is going to activate protein phosphatase enzyme and that protein phosphatase is going to remove phosphate from enzyme's surface. Now, acetyl-CoA carboxylase, it will be active whenever phosphate is not present over its surface. That means, acetyl-CoA carboxylase is active in its dephosphorylated form and insulin is going to keep acetyl-CoA carboxylase in its dephosphorylated form and that's an active form of an enzyme and also insulin when it is presented uh, or maintained at high concentration so that will going to induce acetyl coa carboxylase enzyme as you can see here uh, upward running arrow there and that indicates it's an induction process so insulin keeps acetyl coa carboxylase induced means more and more enzymes are available to do the function now Whenever person in fasting condition, you all know glucagon is the hormone there. So glucagon, uh, by binding to glucagon receptor and increasing cyclic AMP concentration, thereby it is going to increase the activity of protein kinase A. And this protein kinase A, what it does, it is going to add phosphate to the surface of acetyl-CoA carboxylase. And now you know phosphorylated form of acetyl-CoA carboxylase is an inactive form of an enzyme. That's why it is going to decrease conversion of acetyl-CoA into melanyl-CoA, thereby it decreases fatty acid synthesis. Same mechanism will be done by epinephrine. Whenever person has got elevated levels of epinephrine, so epinephrine increases protein kinase A function, thereby it keeps the enzyme inactive by keeping it in the sorry, phosphorylated condition. Now, when a person is in uh, has lack of energy, that is, whenever there is AMP elevated, adenosine monophosphate elevation in the cytoplasm, it is an indicator of lack of energy in the system. So, AMP, we are AMP activated protein kinase, again it is going to keep your 
acetyl co carboxylase inactive by keeping it in phosphorylated state. Now there is one more enzyme which will regulate fatty acid synthesis and that is melanyl coa decarboxylase uh, enzyme. How it is going to regulate? So the melanyl coa decarboxylase as it is there in the name it is going to take melanyl coa back into acetyl coa. So as you, you are seeing here acetyl coa is converted to melanyl coa by acetyl coa carboxylase. So the enzyme that is melanyl coa decarboxylase it does the opposite of acetyl coa carboxylase. What it does? It is going to take melanyl coa back into acetyl coa and this particular enzyme that is melanyl coa decarboxylase it is active in phosphorylated condition. So whenever we have lack of energy means when there is elevation of AMP. So AMP what it does? It is going to act through AMP activated protein kinase and keep this as melanyl coa decarboxylase phosphorylated and the phosphorylated form of an enzyme, it's an active enzyme. So what it does, it is going to take all these melanyl coas back into acetyl coa, thereby you don't have sufficient melanyl coas to synthesize fatty acid. So overall, these are the molecules that will act on, uh, that will act on acetyl coa carboxylase and melanyl coa decarboxylase and regulate our fatty acid biosynthesis in our system. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.